Okay, Chair, thanks very much. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank my Osleaf colleagues for the support they just gave us there, the RMT, and the support they currently are giving us in these disputes. But uh, as you said, they've got to uh, vanish. So uh, what they're saying is quite correct. We're all trade unionists, we're all socialists. It's what we do. We look after each other. So I wanted to personally thank them, but I'm sure I'll get another opportunity to do that. Uh, as I say, my name's Steve Shaw, I'm on the uh, National Executive of the uh, RMT and you'll have to bear with me this evening, I'm a bit of a novice at this. I've been asked to come as a replacement for uh, Mick Cash, our General Secretary, who's uh, otherwise uh, occupied tonight. But I want to thank the Sussex uh, Labour Representation Committee for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm absolutely delighted to do that and delighted to represent my union and the Labour movement in any capacity I can. Uh, the first thoughts that I had at this meeting when I received the uh, correspondence from yourself was what a great heading, let's get Corbyn back in, back, back in and let's get the Tories out. Well, you know, when I was reading the heading, could we come up with a better heading than that? Let's make it uh, a reality. Uh, I just want to give yourself a bit about, uh, bit about myself personally to you. I'm, I'm from uh, up there in Lancashire in Wigan. And uh, from a personal point of view, I've lived in Wigan there the majority of my life. And believe it or not, we're not all about flat caps and whippets. I've not got the dog with me tonight, but uh, I've got the cap. Where we are up there, it's a massive uh, high unemployment area. We're traditionally a mining town. And after the demise of uh, the mining industry by Thatcher, who will never forgive, and I'm sure the rest of us will, are on the same wavelength with that, We've now come to a town with a massive high unemployment uh, figure, unfortunately. Uh, Wigan itself is regarded as a safe haven for the Labour candidate during any election time. It's always been that way. That's the way it is. Ever in my life, I'm 40, 48 years old now, we've always had a, a Labour candidate occupy the seat. But what I will say now is what is being witnessed in the town since uh, the election of Jeremy Corbyn as leader, is what we've got now is we've got a whirlwind of optimism sweeping right through that town. We've never been as optimistic in our life over the Labour Party, which I am a member of, by the way. Uh, people know here that our union do not affiliate to the Labour Party, but that's not uh, an issue for me. I am a member of the Labour Party. Um, I occupy on a number of weekends. I'm a member of the Labour Party and I drink in a lot of Labour clubs up there. Traditionally known as working men's clubs. I'm glad to say now we're calling them workers' clubs in Wigan. Taking away that would have been, you know, we are progressive, that's where we've gone. Uh, <laughs> but what we're believing is now is there is a change on the horizon with Jeremy in there. We've now got a leader that promises change through an anti austerity agenda, fighting for the interests of the working class. And this is a debate that is now going on in the North, but we've not had for a long time. And it's very, very encouraging to hear this. What they'll say in the North, and I don't want to make the Brexit an issue tonight because I heard the, the last speaker make Brexit, and I know it was probably the most divisive uh, election that many of us have been involved in a lifetime. But many were surprised at the outcome. I wasn't. I wasn't surprised. It's no secret my union's position was to leave the EU. That's always been my position personally. I'm not a bit surprised. What they need to do with some of these politicians is come up and look at the towns in the north. Look at them, see what we've got. And I'm not making the EU an excuse for that, but what they are, you've got people who are fed up, who've been let, let down by the last two governments. You know, they've taken these towns backwards. They're like the towns that time have forgotten. And I, I'm part of that. I've lived up there all my life. We go, in, we go into the town these days, the paper, there's no job adverts in there, there's, there's no market, there's no industry, there's absolutely nothing. You've got people living off food banks and people in the north are fed up. And I know it's a, I know the Brexit vote is a, is a national election, it's not just about the north, but I would like to say that I'd like to get some of these people up there and have a look what we've got. So I'm absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever if we want to take this Labour Party back to being a party for the working class, run by the working class, then we must rally behind Jeremy Corbyn and allow him time to finish the job that he started. That is my position and that's what I'll be doing and that's what we've been actively pursuing up there in my region. I want to be given the opportunity as well tonight to speak about the disputes that we've got, the driver-only operation disputes which was touched on earlier by the uh, previous speaker. 
and I want you all to spare a thought for our RMT striking members on Southern Rail and Scott Rail embroiled at the moment in a bitter dispute defending the role of the guard and defending their jobs. And I wonder if you don't know what these disputes are about. These disputes are purely around safety. We must keep hammering this point home publicly and politically until they start listening to us. These disputes are purely around safety. The core of these disputes are around what we call safety critical roles of guards that are currently in play. And safety critical roles include train dispatch, which, which carries out the operation of power operated doors, emergency evacuation of trains, which carries out distinguishing fires, derailments of services, etc., etc., track protection, laying detonators, occupying lines in times of derailment. I'm sure you're getting the picture. That is what these disputes are all about. This is what the government's trying to take away from us. We had an incident up there in the northwest recently regarding a colleague of mine called Martin Z, who carried out a door operation in a safety critical role for a company called Mersey Rail up there. And what happened in this particular incident, it was carrying out the duties as expected, closing the door, making sure the doors are clear, doing a second check and dispatching the train from a platform in Liverpool. And what unfolded there was a disabled passenger coming out of a lift, trying to uh, board the train at the last minute when the hustle alarm was sounding, uh, warning the passenger not to board. He carried out his duties correctly and it resulted in the passenger going between the train and a platform. The guard immediately seen this incident. He came out, carried out all his duties as, as per rule, carried them out, ensured the train didn't move, carried the emergency, um, contacted the emergency services, carried out uh, emergency first aid on this passenger, and what happened? The BTP have charged him after being cleared of any wrongdoing by the company. The British Transport Police have got this guy in court and he's facing prison. This guy is facing prison. I want to promote that point here tonight at this meeting. This is how important guards' roles are on the railway. This is what they're about. Um, what was I going to say? These, these are the essential duties we're trying to get across in the safety and operational role of a guard. These are the core duties and the duties that the DFC want to remove at the expense of passenger safety, despite overwhelming evidence that DOO does not work. DOO meaning driver only operation. In a lot of instances, the DFT wish to run services without a second person on board at all. So it's not just getting around, getting without the safety operational role of a guard. They actually want to run services without anybody on it whatsoever, only drivers. They're quite happy to have these late night services running around with drunken people on board, assaults taking place, sexual assaults taking place, incidents happening on the train and nobody to deal with it. But yet in Scotland where we've got a dispute going on, uh, the Transport for Scotland now advise us that they want the British Transport Police up there trained with taser guns, even though they don't see there's any need for a role of the guard. So that in itself tells its own story. But the evidence is overwhelming against DOO. Since 2011, there's been 10 serious incidents on PTI. PTI standing for Platform Train Interface. This is the dispatcher trains. 80% of these incidents have been investigated by the Rail Accident Investigation Board, otherwise known as the RAIB, and in 80% of cases they've been found that if there had been a guard on board, these incidents would not have happened. Yet the government keeps sending out this message, we don't need guards on trains. But the DFT seem to be hell-bent on extending driver up the operation to other train operating companies and services throughout the network, increasing, as I say, the serious risk to the travelling public in the name of profit, and this is what our members will not accept. So I hope you would join me to finish off in sending a huge message of solidarity to our striking members on Southern and in ScotRail. Some members have been taking nine days' actions up to now, taking action on five occasions, which is the longest rail dispute we've had since 1968. Scottish members have taken 13 days of solid strike action, where the dispute is currently suspended, pending further talks. But finally, what I'd like to say, I want to give a message out to these train operating companies and this government, that our members have manned the barricades for this dispute and I'm going to go with them without a fight. We're an industrial trade union, we've welcomed 
uh, donations from the Labour movement wide and far, and we've got dispute funds set up and we're prepared to fund a further strike action of our members going forward, and we ain't going to back down on this one, so thank you very much.